Good afternoon, everybody. So many people here. Uh, but okay, it's a country with uh, long brewing uh, traditions. I completely understand the situation. Okay, uh, my name is Gunnar Peipman, and I am uh, one of uh, Microsoft MEPs, actually on, uh, on ASP.NET exp expertise, but uh, I also like to play with all other interesting uh, technologies. Uh, today, as I understand, it is one of the last uh, presentations, and uh, by topic, it should be very okay to to finish a conference like this. So, uh, actually, one interesting fact is that I got to home brewing uh, thanks to Netherlands. It was years ago my uh, first work trip here, and uh, I discovered many interesting beers. So, once later, I decided uh, that I want to brew something like this at home. And uh, this is how this ball started rolling. Uh, I think uh, Bock beer should be popular also here in Netherlands. I mean, I have seen here uh, Lente Bock, by example, Herbst Bock. And uh, nobody starts yelling on you if you drink beer in train. So it, it's real beer country, I think. So try something like this in uh, developing Eastern Europe and, uh, and uh, 40 euros uh, fine is minimum you get, uh, get away with. So, uh, now let's talk about Icebock. How many of you, know, of you know what kind of beer is Icebock? Raise your hands. Okay, okay, some of you have already got to troubles. That's nice to see. So, uh, actually, uh, before we start, I have uh, uh, all materials for this presentation available in internet, also a sample solution uh, with uh, IoT uh, project and a web, uh, web pack, and you can also find uh, a lot of in interesting stuff uh, also from my blog. Uh, when I work out something, then I always blog about it, or if I find uh, something uh, technically interesting. So it's a blog uh, by developer to developers. You are all uh, welcome there. Uh, so, but let's get to Icebock. Uh, let's make a first, uh, first uh, uh, visit to Icebock world. It is believed that Icebock was invented uh, ac accidentally. Uh, so it was uh, Reichelbrau Brewery in Kulmbach. It's a uh, few hundred kilometers to north uh, uh, from uh, Nürnberg. So if you take a train uh, from Amsterdam to Frankfurt, uh, then you are already pretty, pretty near to Kulmbach. So, but it is believed that it was Hartein Brewery and, uh, and the brewery lad was tired of, uh, of uh, carrying uh, barrels to a brewery house. So he stopped in the evening to have a rest at home and left a few barrels outside. But the night came freezing cold and uh, what was in the barrels uh, eventually froze. In the morning, when a poor lad came back, there was an angry brewmaster, and uh, as a punishment, the poor lad had to drink what's left liquid in the barrels. Back in days, uh, they didn't know that uh, alcohol and water freeze in different uh, temperatures. So the poor lad took a, took a tankard and took a first sip of punishment, punishment and a wide smile came on his face because it was the best punishment uh, he has ever got in his life. And as a generous guy with a big heart, he of course uh, shared uh, his uh, punishment with everybody else standing around. So uh, it is believed that this is how uh, the world got uh, to 
Icebox. Uh, I make a little uh, jump to internet. Uh, here you can uh, see one of the uh, uh, top level Icebox beers. Uh, it's also available here in Netherlands. Uh, I don't know about Amsterdam, but uh, I know Eindhoven pretty well thanks to Eindhoven Metal Meeting. And uh, near the uh, city center of Eindhoven, there is one big Albert Hein store. And across the street is uh, some kind of a smaller storehouse where you can uh, buy beer with boxes. So uh, this beer, of course, is worth to buy with a box. And if you keep it in a cool place, uh, then uh, actually it uh, doesn't go bad. It, you can keep the box uh, in the cellar like a year or two even. So, but why are these uh, icebox beers uh, so special? Uh, they're one of uh, those so-called big beers, meaning that they have a high alcohol content, but also a very, very rich, uh, rich taste. Uh, taste profile usually is a mix of uh, black bread, raisins, hints uh, to dried fruits, and uh, this beer is actually excellent, uh, excellent sip after a strong dinner, or I don't know how you spend your winter time. You can take it for lunch too if you like. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I also know that uh, you like uh, football very much. You like Heineken too, and uh, if you put these two together, you have a great time uh, the Netherlands way. So, uh, a little advice, uh, this ice box is not a beer you take few six-packs for a football game. Uh, yes, you can do it, but uh, be warned, morning of your, your next day will begin in the evening of next day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, be careful. Okay. Uh, Actually, uh, after uh, discovering this uh, nice beer uh, during Eindhoven, me Eindhoven Metal Meeting, I decided to try to brew something uh, similar at home uh, using simple equipment uh, that I have. Home brewers often use uh, simple equipment uh, when they are living in an apartment because uh, advanced equipment is the shortest way to piss off your wife. It happens anyway, even with a, a smaller <laughs> set of equipment, but <laughs> it happens in a smaller scale. <laughs> so, mm, now, uh, brewing process in Glantz is actually, actually simple. I know that near Tilburg there, there, there is a one uh, Trappist uh, monastery. Uh, so in Netherlands areas, actually, uh, uh, brewing was a little bit easier than in Germany because Germany had a purity law, meaning that uh, uh, if it's beer, then it is uh, malts, hops, yeast, and water. Uh, monks in the Trappist monasteries uh, had free hands uh, to use all other ingredients if they like. So, uh, but uh, uh, but actually, uh, brewing process is pretty classic. First. We are uh, mashing and lautering uh, the malts, meaning that we extract sugars. Then we are boiling hops uh, into, into a liquid. Then we have to cool liquid down as fast as possible because then we get, get another bunch of sugars. And uh, then we are going to fermentation and lagering. So if we are doing, for example, a double bock, you say topple bock, am I correct? Okay, then let it be Toppelbock. Yeah, it's just a little bit unusual to speak in English and uh, then say Toppelbock. <laughs> okay, so when we get to a Toppelbock, it's usually around uh, seven, seven or eight uh, percent by alcohol volume. Uh, then uh, with a ice bock, we have additional step. We apply ice distilling, meaning that we are we will freeze a beer, uh, so the little uh, layer of sleet starts forming, and then we remove uh, the sleet, 
and uh, this is how uh, beer alcohol content uh, jumps up to 12 or 13. So uh, it of course means uh, in a planning phase uh, a lot more work than uh, double buck, uh, double buck. Uh, but uh, the end result is uh, worth it if, it, if you succeed. <laughs> If you don't succeed, uh, then uh, you can be sad and drink uh, what turned out. <laughs> so. <coughs> uh, so after ice distilling, uh, and in a case of Toppelbock, after lager lagering, uh, beer is usually bottled, and uh, such a strong pairs usually before drinking, they have to uh, they have to stay uh, in bottles around a month or two. So. They can uh, the taste of beer can uh, can settle. So uh, here is a photo too, me at home in action. So it is it was a eight degrees double bock that ended up with a, to be a eleven degrees ice bock. I was very happy a few weeks. So now. <laughs> uh, uh, why I built uh, this IoT solution? Actually, uh, uh, doing uh, icebox uh, beer at the balcony of Soviet era panel house is pretty challenging. It's also interesting, uh, but uh, there are some limitations. Okay, uh, you, are, you are also living uh, pretty near to sea. Uh, probably I don't have to explain you what it means when uh, wind is coming from sea. Yeah. Uh, when uh, when uh, beer is about uh, to be ice distilled, uh, the problem is uh, we need a cold enough uh, weather. And uh, depending on how strong the beer, beer is, uh, it may, and, it, and depending on weather, of course, it may take time, uh, like a few hours or perhaps, let's say, 14 hours before uh, beer gets to freezing point. We don't want to sit next to bucket all day. We don't want to open bucket to see if uh, sleet uh, starts forming already, because with a, even if it's not stormy outside, it's not strong wind, uh, with... Uh, just by air, uh, we can uh, still uh, get uh, some uh, dust and small bubbles to beer. And this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, pollution is not nice. These mo small dust bubbles are way uh, easier than uh, beer. So uh, if this kind of uh, pollution gets in, uh, you get in the end the, the beer that has uh, some crap layer on it because uh, these pebbles are easy, they float on the surface. They don't uh, drop down. So, and uh, even worse, if uh, it's uh, some hibernated bacteria that later wakes up uh, when uh, some strong yeast is forming uh, foam uh, to your beer and carbonation, then uh, actually uh, yeast may get infected and, uh, and it may ruin the beer. Of course, al alcohol content uh, remains, but the taste is not so good anymore. So, uh, so I decided uh, to build uh, some uh, a little bit intelligent uh, solution, so I don't have to uh, uh, wander uh, to balcony and back all day. So I can uh, also go out if I like, and uh, I don't have to be worried. I just wanted to beat uh, this uh, freezing process to be in my pocket. So. Uh, uh, this is uh, the original drawing by Big Master Me, planning uh, the solution. Okay, uh, my first idea was, okay, I take uh, two temperature sensors, uh, I take uh, raspberry or something else, uh, and, uh, and then I can uh, measure uh, ambient temperature and the pair temperature. So somehow I connect it uh, to Azure Cloud, and uh, visualize uh, the data. My actual problem was that I didn't have time to, uh, to start uh, building out uh, some uh, nice full-blown solution. 20 years ago in North, we had a 
guaranteed cold winters. From November to March, it was always cold. You can ice distill whenever you want. But uh, now, 20 years later, it's different. It's kind of uh, like a lottery. So December is lottery. In, uh, in February, uh, yeah, well, we usually have at least few weeks. So we are depending now on uh, weather forecast. And, uh, and I saw that, okay, cold weathers are coming. I don't have time enough to build spatial solution. So let's try to put something together uh, as fast as possible and make it work. So otherwise, if I miss uh, these cold weathers, perhaps I have to wait one month before another, another uh, cold, uh, cold period comes. So main concerns first were uh, all kind of uh, technology related uh, uh, technology-related uh, uh, things like uh, what kind of port is it? Will it be Windows, IoT, or Linux? Is it possible to get all electronic components uh, in time? Then, of course, how to put uh, these uh, small electronic pieces together? Uh, it's not uh, anymore the era that was uh, 30 years ago when uh, you buy uh, electronics. It's uh, bunch of things on your table and uh, then you just <laughs> connect it uh, with uh, your bare, uh, bare hands. Uh, using breadboard was out of question because uh, uh, out uh, there uh, can uh, be really bad weather. And of course questions about uh, how I get the data out from, uh, uh, from uh, Raspberry. I don't want to have any uh, connections to some SQL servers. Also, I don't want to build any, uh, any web API that is a central part of world solution. Do we have anything that is already there? I just uh, connect services and, uh, and I get uh, the freezing process to my pocket. So, uh, well, as it turns out, uh, we can do it. So uh, these are electronic components I had to buy. Uh, besides this, uh, on the software side, I decided to go with uh, Windows 10 IoT Core. Uh, Visual Studio has, a, has a pretty good IoT templates available. Uh, also, uh, I found uh, that for, for these temperature sensors, there's also uh, existing uh, library available as a NuGet package, RINs and IoT one wire. Uh, I was ready to implement this, uh, these, uh, you know, byte arrays uh, for communication with, uh, with uh, sensors. I thought, okay, few sleepless nights and I'm there. But uh, then uh, RINs and one wire uh, wiped uh, this problem uh, off uh, from table. So. And uh, also it turned out that uh, for Azure uh, IoT services, uh, we have uh, very nice libraries that work. So, and, and then after digging around in internet, I found out how to connect uh, all the pieces together. And uh, image on the uh, right is uh, the, same, uh, the same device. Uh, you may now ask uh, if uh, everything that comes uh, from Eastern Europe uh, must look so ugly. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> there is one reason. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, the small electronic components inside here. I want it just to isolate these small pieces of electronics to uh, weather outside. So uh, the, if it's a snowstorm, then uh, uh, snow doesn't get uh, to, uh, to these components. So a friend of mine who, is, uh, who doesn't have uh, much uh, sense of uh, beautiful arts like me, our uh, grand level is uh, drawing something in Microsoft Paint. So he uh, built me this uh, nice, nice piece of... Uh, electronics. So it's purely practical. Uh, if I get famous and people want to buy it, uh, then of course I will uh, make it look beautiful. Perhaps I will paint it white. 
So, and here you can see uh, uh, the same device making its uh, first uh, test run on a balcony. Uh, I powered it with a, with a simple uh, battery bank. It was 15,000 milliampere hours, if I'm correct, some 15 or 18. So on, uh, on this kind of uh, uh, battery bank, uh, the solution was able uh, to run uh, uh, for, for 16 hours. So uh, I later organized a stable uh, power supply uh, to balcony. Uh, but uh, for test run, uh, using uh, some battery like this, it's completely okay. Okay, uh, now uh, this is uh, what was my final solution. Uh, I take sensor readings from Raspberry. I send it to IoT Hub on Azure. Uh, then Stream Analytics, it's a, serv it's a service uh, uh, to analyze and, uh, and uh, transform real-time data streams. Uh, gets data from IoT Hub and, uh, and it uh, sends uh, this data to Power BI and a SQL, uh, SQL database. So uh, SQL database was necessary to have uh, you know, just a history data. Okay, uh, I try to be a brave guy now and uh, connect uh, this uh, 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 little piece of uncommercial un looking uh, electronics together. So I have now a nice plastic box for this. I once uh, came with this solution and uh, and it was just in my backpack. And uh, Frankfurt Airport security guys almost uh, almost scared out from life. <laughs> there was uh, one uh, one elder lady, uh, who, uh, border guard border guard officer, uh, who was uh, checking my checking my bag. And uh, and then uh, she asked the, there suddenly some kind of uh, tall, muscled uh, guys with uh, special weapons, and <laughs> and I really felt how uh, things uh, now start uh, start escalating. <laughs> when I wanted to know uh, what happened, what happened, and why uh, this kind of uh, attention to me, then. And then it turned out uh, uh, that uh, if uh, you look at my bag uh, through a luggage scanner, it really looks like bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I will now uh, uh, connect uh, connect uh, these uh, these electronics together. So it's a grounding here. So after uh, yeah after uh, Frankfurt I got very <laughs> very careful and bought this uh, plastic box. <laughs> uh, in practice uh, this plastic box box works by example. Uh, I I tested uh, out the same solution uh, before presentation in uh, in Köln, and I was on a Amsterdam uh, Köln train. And then came after a Netherlands border game, uh, some uh, police officers with guns asking everybody, where are you going, why are you going, and so on. They didn't ask anything from, from me, <laughs> but they <laughs> didn't even run away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so meaning that uh, it's uh, perhaps not so bad uh, to uh, travel, ar uh, travel around with equipment like this. Okay, so now I have, have it all connected. It's actually pretty simple. I put uh, the device uh, now here uh, because it uh, it starts. It takes time when it uh, when it starts. Okay, let's see if uh, if all the cabling is going well now. So 
and uh, until uh, the device uh, starts, we have a we have a time to uh, to focus uh, to focus on uh, on how this uh, this kind of uh, thing is uh, actually actually built. Uh, so I hope uh, I hope it has power enough. Uh, okay, I uh, uh, I switch over now. Uh, okay, let's take actually the next uh, slide. Okay, uh, so the main uh, working uh, engine here is uh, Windows IoT background process. Uh, there are uh, special templates available uh, in Visual Studio Marketplace uh, you can use uh, for background uh, processes. They are actually simple. The working uh, rhythm is also pretty straightforward. We read uh, sensor data. If needed, we apply calculations, like estimate uh, for how long time uh, we have uh, until pair starts fr freezing. Then we send data to IoT Hub, and uh, and after this, we wait uh, uh, some uh, moments of time. Uh, I just for uh, just for interest, I tried out what happens if uh, I use minimum delay possible uh, uh, for reading temperatures. Uh, don't do it. If there are overlapping uh, read read processes then uh, um, Raspberry turns out to be uh, like a black hole. It is doing something. You see that it, there is energy com consumption, but you have no idea what it is doing because it doesn't respond to you anymore, <laughs> anyhow. So, and, uh, and also, uh, uh, depending on, uh, on which model of uh, sensors you have, uh, there are some uh, initialization parameters you have to set uh, right so everything works. Uh, I recommend you to use uh, uh, at Raspberry uh, local logging. So even when your uh, device uh, turns to a black hole, uh, you at least have, uh, have uh, some logs about what happened. So if you're using external logs like, uh, I don't know, uh, syslog server, perhaps uh, application insights, uh, then uh, in a moment when Raspberry turns to black hole, it doesn't uh, communicate with the uh, outside world anymore. So uh, this is what I found out uh, during my uh, extreme experiment. Thanks God, the device is alive. Okay, uh, and uh, to get the solution uh, work stable, you have to make sure you don't have any chance for overlapping uh, read operations. So as soon as there are overlapping read operations, uh, things get uh, really, uh, really ugly. Uh, now I open, uh, I open uh, this uh, uh, startup task here in Visual Studio. Uh, you, do you see uh, code well? Or do you want it to be bigger? Bigger? Okay, one moment. Next stop, 150. Is it better? Great. Okay, uh, the run method you see here is, uh, is uh, the one uh, uh, that is uh, called by, uh, by uh, Windows, uh, Windows 10 when uh, when your uh, background task is uh, is starting so uh, what i'm doing here is uh, i'm uh, i'm setting up connection uh, to azure uh, iot hub and uh, then i i start the uh, timer process uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, reading sensor data after every 10 seconds so uh, now mm, here here is a is a callback of timer. Uh, so what I'm doing here is uh, 
is reading of uh, sensors data and then uh, sending uh, data out. Currently, I don't uh, send anything to IoT Hub. We will use, uh, uh, let's say, a freezing emulator uh, to get a better, a better demo about how uh, data is visualized. Uh, but this is, a, uh, this is what I had to write. So it's actually a really small, uh, small, piece, of, uh, small piece of code. And uh, to make sure uh, I don't run uh, to, uh, uh, to overlapping uh, timer calls, I used here uh, a monitor. So if, uh, it's, if it doesn't uh, get lock, uh, then uh, it just uh, jumps out and uh, doesn't uh, do anything uh, with, uh, with the sensors. So nothing, uh, nothing complex. Okay, I check uh, meanwhile for a moment if, uh, if, uh, if Raspberry is alive. Okay, so. We see, uh, we see uh, how uh, resources are, are used. Okay, uh, I try now uh, to, uh, to run a reader service, the one that is reading uh, sensors. So, okay, it, uh, oh, I have to, Oh, okay, okay, okay. We have here uh, uh, some uh, some little uh, things to set every time we every time we uh, want to uh, want to run it on uh, directly on a board. So let's see if uh, here. Okay, this uh, seems to be correct, and let's try to run it again. So uh, it's uh, if you have uh, uh, changed the code and uh, and uh, made a practically clean rebuild, uh, then uh, it can be a little bit uh, uh, slow when uh, when it when code or a built uh, solution is uh, deployed to Raspberry, but. Uh, but usually, uh, if you keep uh, Visual Studio attached. To Raspberry, then uh, all uh, subsequent uh, runs uh, will be uh, will be actually actually faster. Okay, so so now it uh, now it uh, gets ready for building. Okay, we don't have any any errors here, and uh, while it is uh, it is doing its work. Uh, we can uh, uh, go uh, go on with the slides. Okay, Azure IT, IoT Hub. It's uh, it's uh, also uh, uh, one of those uh, hub services, but uh, different from Event Hub. Uh, IoT One is built uh, for massive scale. So uh, the fact that I am using just one Raspberry. Uh, doesn't doesn't mean that uh, uh, let's say uh, big uh, real estate owners, for example, uh, come with a one is one device. They may have uh, uh, thousands of sensors per one office building, for example. Uh, and now imagine uh, these uh, sensors reporting data all the time, few times per minute, for example. So. Uh, this is something uh, that pr probably even Hub doesn't survive, but IoT Hub works well. So, uh, if you are building your own application, you started building something, then uh, there's also a free scale tire available. It is limited to a small number of uh, messages, but uh, it's uh, more than enough uh, to uh, ice distill a bucket or to of a nice ice block. So I think uh, for some reason that also Microsoft engineers love ice block. So, and, uh, and the best, best of all, uh, we have a, 
and we have a uh, well uh, well working uh, nuget packages that that are pretty easy to use so uh, now another thing is uh, uh, stream analytics uh, if you are if you are ice distilling at home, probably you don't want to use stream analytics uh, a lot because it's a pretty expensive, uh, really expensive service. Uh, it has, uh, how it works, it has uh, input sources where data is coming in. And then there, there is a query and, uh, and the query is transforming uh, input data to something uh, that is okay for output, and it happens over a given uh, time window. So if we can, uh, if we send, uh, let's say, uh, temperature readings after every 30 seconds, then uh, we can uh, uh, tell to st stream analytics that, okay, uh, time window is, uh, let's say, 15 minutes, and take 15 minutes averages of the numbers we are uh, sending to input. So, mm, let's see for a moment now. Ah, oh, okay, we are on a point where uh, where uh, uh, process is getting uh, to Raspberry. So, uh, I know I probably look like maniac with these ugly wires in my hand. So, but uh, uh, keep your eye now on uh, on uh, output uh, window. So uh, soon it uh, starts uh, showing uh, showing temperatures, and uh, then uh, let's see how uh, temperature uh, in uh, one of uh, these uh, sensors is uh, changing. Okay. Uh, while it uh, while it happens, I explain with a few words how uh, uh, how a stream analytics uh, works with uh, Power BI. Uh, Power BI has actually a free uh, free pricing tire available, and it works with a push data, meaning that uh, uh, some service, some external service, is pushing data. Uh, to uh, some uh, Power BI data set. So, and uh, free tire had, was it uh, one or two gigabytes of data available? So, of course, if you, if you don't need uh, push data anymore, you can uh, delete this data set and, uh, and you have another uh, free two gigabytes of data. So, uh, now, uh, to, to show you how stream analytics queries, query looks like. Here is a one example. So this is uh, the one uh, we will use in, uh, in the last demo. So it is a, it's practically a, practically a SQL query, as you can see. So it, uh, it has its, uh, oh, okay. Let's get back to uh, Power BI when, uh, <coughs> when this little experiment has made. Oh, it tells me that there is no device. Okay, I try to run it uh, one more time because device uh, really exists. Uh, so, Okay, you can see it's uh, this query is uh, like uh, like any other uh, uh, SQL query, and uh, this tumbling window uh, now is uh, uh, the time window definition. Here I am. I have set it to uh, twenty seconds. So uh, now now let's see if uh, we manage to get it work or not. Uh, okay, it's updating a layout. So, uh, now uh, uh, stream analytics is also actually uh, 
built uh, for uh, for you know big amounts of data, not just for my one uh, little board that is uh, freezing, uh, that is uh, measuring how my beer is freezing. So, but it was uh, pretty interesting to find out uh, that uh, that I can use uh, stream analytics uh, uh, practically also for this kind of uh, small scenario. Okay, it doesn't uh, love uh, my electronics today, I think. Um, but uh, okay, let's get uh, let's get uh, on and uh, get uh, soon to a, a bigger uh, uh, final uh, final demo. Uh, okay, now about data visualization. Uh, one option I had was Power BI, and Power BI actually is a good one because it is. It is available as a web-based solution, as a top, as a desktop one. You can also uh, download a Power BI client application to your uh, mobile phone. Okay, uh, it's easy to build nice visualizations for data. Uh, but one uh, one thing I had, uh, one issue I had was that it wasn't uh, automatically refreshing. Uh, this uh, charge when data was coming. If you don't bother uh, to uh, deal with Power BI, you can always uh, you can take Excel. Uh, here you can see also a, a small uh, a screenshot when I when I was building solution and made the test runs. I uh, just used simple Excel work, uh, Excel uh, sheet. I connected it directly uh, to a SQL database and uh, at connection settings I said, okay, refresh it after every uh, 30 seconds. So it doesn't look professional, it doesn't look nice and so on, but it works like charm, okay? So it's kind of a poor man's power BI. So, <laughs> I don't know if I can say it at Microsoft conference, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, what I can say for sure, it's uh, not a solution uh, I can uh, put in my pocket and walk around. So, and then I thought, okay, uh, I can build uh, some uh, Windows, uh, Windows 10 uh, application. I can deploy it to my Windows phone uh, okay, for now, uh, I think uh, the, be the better choice would be uh, considering, uh, let's say, some are in forms, perhaps. Uh, but uh, still, you can uh, use uh, your uh, UVP skills. Uh, so I decided uh, perhaps I can uh, have this kind of application. Uh, as it turned out, uh, it's... Uh, it's not uh, hard to build at all. So I used uh, also uh, some uh, uh, some open source uh, libraries, and uh, and I got this kind of uh, uh, small and uh, simple uh, client application. The whole idea of application was actually uh, just one task. I take phone out from my pocket. I run application and I will see what's going on uh, on my balcony. So, this is it. Uh, okay, I... Uh, now, uh, now I will run uh, the emulated freezing process. Okay, here you can see uh, IoT Hub. Uh, these are messages uh, that uh, are moving through a hub, and uh, here we have a uh, we have a stream analytics with uh, with uh, stream analytics monitoring. I have here uh, one uh, uh, Power BI report. It looks empty, I know, because uh, it doesn't show data yet. Uh, I have here uh, uh, same report uh, opened in uh, Power BI uh, Windows application and. Uh, and I now I also I also run uh, uh, the UVP application I built. Okay, uh, so let's take this one too. Okay, 
okay, no errors. This Visual Studio allowing me again. Okay, so. Um, and now I will, I will run a process that, uh, uh, that emulates uh, Raspberry. So. Okay, so now it starts uh, sending uh, uh, readings to IoT Hub. Okay, we can see on the screen that uh, something is uh, something is happening. Okay. Uh, we can uh, now go and uh, see what's uh, what's going on in Power BI. Do we have any data here? So it's yes. Uh, you have to understand that uh, data here in a Power BI is uh, coming through uh, Stream Analytics. Uh, this application actually is uh, working uh, uh, directly, uh, directly against IoT Hub. So uh, I made it work this way just to <laughs> just to check what what's going on uh, uh, in IoT Hub. And, uh, and uh, if uh, Stream Analytics is uh, working uh, the way uh, I expect. So, but, it, but now you see how uh, slowly the freezing process uh, is happening. So, in practice, when you are really ice distilling, you don't need temperature readings after every uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Uh, 15 minutes is usually more than enough uh, of course, if your if your house uh, has a very volatile, uh, a very volatile uh, heat uh, heat exchange, uh, then uh, yeah, you may need a shorter uh, period, perhaps. But uh, I but I think 15 minutes uh, should be uh, should be optimal. So uh, I think. Uh, uh, using uh, practically the same uh, the, uh, same uh, view uh, for uh, some summary application uh, shouldn't be very hard uh, hard thing to do, and uh, and uh, you know if your only goal is uh, to just to take a phone and uh, and see okay where we are with the temperature, then you don't even have to bother with a mobile application. Just take Power BI. Uh, great report, uh, install Power BI mobile application to your phone and uh, you can uh, same well uh, see uh, uh, what are uh, last uh, temperature readings uh, from sensors, uh, what is the temperature outside, what is the temperature uh, uh, near uh, or inside your pocket. Uh, now, why I, why I want uh, two temperatures? Why I want pair temperature and ambient one? Uh, actually, ambient temperature may, uh, there may be a, a sign uh, that, a sign about, uh, for example, that a freezing doesn't happen. Okay, if, uh, if you have a pocket on a, on a balcony, and uh, and the uh, sun is shining, so it's possible that the uh, sun is heating up here in balcony, uh, and uh, and if you your beer was on the way to freezing point, so <laughs> so uh, it may stop. It doesn't get to freezing point until the sun is out. So when sun goes away, then uh, it takes time when uh, air is cooling down and uh, your beer starts again slowly stepping to freezing point. So this is why I why I have a, a, why I needed a, two sensors. Also, if it is a balcony, then a, a balcony can be a dark chest of uh, ther thermodynamical wonders. So, your how, uh, for example, wall of house. Is, uh, 
is giving out the heat. So uh, it's possible there is sun outside. Uh, it's possible uh, that, uh, uh, for example, uh, you have a beautiful weather, but the uh, wind is coming from a sea. Air, air humidity is high, and uh, and again, uh, uh, the temperature uh, plays a little bit differently than usual. So, uh, with an additional sensor, it's uh, pretty easy to find out what spots on the balcony are the coolest one and uh, best uh, protected uh, from uh, all kind of additional uh, additional heat. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, we're uh, uh, getting to end. So our uh, freezing, uh, uh, freezing uh, uh, simulation looks uh, pretty nice. It's even too nice, if you ask me. I show you why. <laughs> uh, one moment. Okay, I close it right now, and uh, let's get back to slides. Uh, so, uh, mm, so we were here. Okay, uh, now this is uh, uh, how things uh, go in real life. <laughs> so, uh, it, as you can see, it may take hours uh, until uh, beer gets uh, to a correct temperature. If you leave a cover on a pocket, a plastic cover, then uh, there is a point from uh, where uh, temperature doesn't go below anymore. Uh, so uh, your uh, great great grandfathers lagered beer uh, not with uh, uh, isolated buckets, but uh, they usually used uh, some kind of uh, thick blanket over a barrel. So because uh, then uh, there is a heat exchange with ambient uh, environment and the beer is uh, freezing uh, or cooling uh, way faster. So, but here you can uh, now see uh, what happens when, uh, when, <laughs> when a pocket is uh, sealed with a plastic. Uh, blue line is uh, showing air temperature and the green line is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, practically uh, weather information from a local uh, weather service. So uh, this is uh, the same application uh, with uh, background services and uh, other components is uh, available on GitHub. There is no any commercial license uh, by me or any other, uh, uh, I don't know, financial ambitions up in the air. So if you want to uh, play with this application, you want to use it, uh, then uh, uh, go on and <laughs> and make uh, one uh, great beer. So, <laughs> so here you can see also uh, how I use the same, uh, uh, same uh, solution uh, to monitor uh, lagering of my first uh, Czech style uh, Pilsner. Again you can see how, uh, uh, how uh, <coughs> it, it was a pretty challenging uh, because uh, suddenly, uh, weather uh, weather was like 10 degrees outside, and it's not uh, perfect for lagering. Lagering uh, happens best somewhere around uh, zero, zero till let's say two degrees. Okay, uh, so uh, from here, uh, those of you who love beer, you can get into home brewing. It's it's a lot of fun. Fun. Uh, no matter uh, what is your wife saying. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. Okay. <laughs> you can try out uh, what I have uh, built uh, this uh, far. If you have your own ideas, you want to commit, then uh, you are always welcome. I'm a very, very kind guy, although I sometimes look uh, pretty monster. And, uh, of course, uh, be part of... Uh, Brewing story, or if you if you don't uh, have time to brew, I think uh, you have time at least uh, some good pairs anyway. Okay, thank you. <laughs>